une guerre contre la liberté, contre la démocratie et contre les droits de tous les Ukrainiens. Canada, in, in the face of this conflict, will stand steadfast with the people of Ukraine. We expected upon reports of a potential further invasion into Ukraine that we would see displacement of Ukrainians. That's why we started preparing more than a month ago to ensure we had the ability to respond to a potential influx uh, of people seeking to come to Canada. Since January 19th, we began processing applications in our existing inventory or within Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada on a priority basis. To date, there have been nearly 4,000 applications that have been approved. This is across all lines of business, and we're going to continue to offer that expedited processing. We also knew that we had to prepare on the ground for the situation when people would flee to the West. Minister Jolie was able to negotiate the safe passage for Canadian citizens, permanent residents, and their families as well to ensure that they could escape a potentially violent conflict. We beefed up the resources in our offices in Warsaw, uh, in Vienna, and Bucharest to ensure that we would have the capacity to process people who found themselves seeking to come to Canada or to make an application. Nous traitons en priorité les demandes de documents de voyage pour les citoyens canadiens, les résidents permanents et les membres de leur famille immédiate afin qu'ils puissent rentrer chez eux rap rapidement. We also established a dedicated service channel. This is a tool that allows people seeking information about the immigration process to get information, and I want to ensure that people can get information that they can rely on in an age of misinformation and disinformation. For those who are seeking to get assistance or to have uh, information, I would urge you to call the telephone line that we established at 613-321-4243. I'll repeat that for those who are listening. 613-321-4243. Applicants and those uh, with questions can use the web form and use the keyword Ukraine 2022 in their web form inquiry and their email will be given priority. Once again, the keyword is Ukraine 2022. Nous avons également lancé le traitement urgent de documents de voyage et des passeports pour les citoyens canadiens et les résidents permanents et certains passeports sont délivrés en moins de 24 heures. For Ukrainian nationals in Canada, we know that you can't go home right now. So we've taken steps to make it easier for you to stay. We've made the decision to extend temporary status and issue open work permits to Ukrainian visitors workers and students who are already in Canada. Nous éliminons également les frais de demande passeport de documents de résidents permanents, de preuves de citoyenneté, de visas de visiteurs et de visas d'études et de travail. Generations of Ukrainian immigrants, many of whom were forced to flee war and persecution many years ago, have helped build the country that we love so much today. The people-to-people -people connections between Canadians and Ukrainians justify an extraordinary response. Tous les Canadiens se sont unis pour soutenir le courageux peuple ukrainien et les valeurs qui nos pays partagent. I have to say, watching the scenes unfold and the profiles and courage that we're witnessing is an absolute inspiration to the world. And it's helped create an attitude of wanting to do more amongst the Canadians that I'm speaking with. Over the past week, I've heard directly from the Ukrainian-Canadian community, the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress, and businesses across the country on how best to welcome Ukrainians in Canada. In this dark hour, we are with you. I can assure you that we're working to prepare additional measures, and in the near future, we will have more to say to identify the best path forward to welcome more Ukrainians to Canada in the safest and quickest way possible. Thank you so much. I'll now share the microphone with my colleague, Minister Anand. Good afternoon, bon après-midi. I know that there are many Canadians watching Putin's horrific attack on Ukraine who want to know how they can help and what we as a country are doing to help. Depuis le premier jour, le Canada a été là pour l'armée et le peuple de l'Ukraine. Since day one, Canada has been there for Ukraine's military and its people. Over the past few years, 
Our Canadian Armed Forces have trained over 33,000 Ukrainian soldiers to help them prepare for the very type of attack that they are facing today. Then, as Russia continued to amass troops at Ukraine's border, we announced last month the extension and expansion of that very training mission, Operation Unifier. Since Russia breached and violated Ukraine's borders, we've increased our support by approving and delivering approximately $10 million worth of non-lethal and lethal aid to Ukraine this past month, which arrived on Ukrainian soil prior to the onset of these further hostilities. To bolster the Ukrainian people's strong resistance against Putin's increasing aggression, yesterday, Minister Joly and I announced that we would be providing additional non-lethal aid, ranging from body armor to gas masks, plus additional airlift support, facilitated by up to 50 Canadian Armed Forces personnel, both to ensure that this aid gets there and to support NATO's efforts in the region more broadly. The first such plane left for Europe today with the second later this week. And now, at the further request of Ukraine and in coordination with NATO allies, we are announcing today that we are providing even more lethal aid to Ukraine and will be sending 100 Carl Gustav anti-tank weapon systems and 2,000 rockets, which we will be working to deliver as quickly as possible in the coming days. Comme nous l'avons annoncé la semaine dernière, nous renforçons le flanc est de l'OTAN. Et si cela nous est demandé, du personnel des forces armées canadiennes sont prêts à être déployés dans la force de réaction de l'OTAN et soutenir Affaires mondiales Canada et le ministère de l'Immigration dans leur activité humanitaire. As always, I want to express my deepest thanks to our Canadian Armed Forces for the critical work they have done to prepare our Ukrainian friends for this fight and who continue to answer the call to defend Canada, our allies, and the rules-based international order. Slava Ukraini. There's in the room. And then we'll go to the phone. On va prendre 20 minutes de questions, commencer avec les journalistes dans la salle, puis aller au téléphone, starting with uh, CTV. CTV. President Zelensky has come out and asked four nationals who want to come fight in Ukraine that they're welcome to come, and he would welcome them to come there. Would the federal government support in any way Canadian citizens going to Ukraine to fight against the Russians? I think all Canadians have been inspired by how President Zelensky and the people of Ukraine have stood up against this Russian onslaught. Uh, following along on social media, in our nightly news, uh, seeing the images of people defending their homeland, I can understand why so many proud Ukrainian Canadians uh, are looking to support in any possible way. We have uh, put forward uh, ways to donate through the Red Cross to help people directly. Uh, I know people are talking about opening their homes and their communities to people fleeing. And indeed, uh, some Canadians may choose uh, to take more active steps. Um, we will, uh, of course, uh, look at ways to make sure that we're keeping Canadians safe. That remains our priority every step of the way. Uh, and we encourage Canadians, as we have been for many, many uh, months, uh, many weeks anyway, uh, to uh, leave Ukraine if they are in Ukraine right now. You mentioned in your remarks that civilians are being targeted by the residents right now. That, that's an assessment that the Ukrainian government agrees with. But they say that's war crimes. Do you think that what the Russians have done in Ukraine right now constitutes war crimes? Uh, we have seen over the past couple of days uh, that Putin made a grave miscalculation. He thought it would be easy to uh, conquer Ukraine, to take over its capital city. He thought the West would be divided and uncertain in its response and thought he had accounted for any of the sanctions that we would bring forward. He was terribly wrong on 
both counts. The West and indeed countries around the world are united in standing up for Ukraine, not just for Ukraine, but for the principles of democracy and the rule of law that has led to tremendous prosperity and stability in our world over the past 75 years. And people around the world are united in recognizing that you cannot upend 75 years of peace and stability and hope to continue to benefit from the economic largesse of those 75 years of peace and stability, which is what we have demonstrated. And further, the courage, the resilience of the people of Ukraine in standing up to defend their homeland has inspired us all, but has surprised Putin. And unfortunately, we are seeing him stepping up in the intensity of the attacks, in the broadness of targets, including increasingly civilian and infrastructure targets that are absolutely unacceptable. Putin's crime is to have chosen to invade a peaceful neighboring country and violate the UN Charter and the principles of sovereignty and territorial integrity. And the world will not stand by idly and watch it happen. Bonjour, Yasmine Mehdi avec Radio-Canada. Par rapport aux, aux déplacés, à l'exigence de visa pour les Ukrainiens qui voudraient venir au Canada, j'essaie de comprendre ce qui empêche le Canada de lever l'exigence de visa immédiatement. Est-ce qu'il y a quelque chose de spécifique? Pourquoi on ne le fait pas maintenant? On est en train de regarder depuis les débuts la meilleure façon d'aider. Euh, évidemment, on a pris euh, de l'avant plusieurs mesures concrètes qui ont accéléré le traitement de demande, qui vont faciliter l'accès. Euh, mais on est aussi en train de regarder tous les différents outils qu'on pourrait utiliser pour aider le mieux possible ceux qui veulent venir au Canada. Comme on l'a vu, les Canadiens sont là pour accueillir euh, des gens qui fuient cette, euh, cette violence, qui veulent établir temporairement ou de façon permanente une nouvelle vie pour eux ici au Canada, comme tant d'Ukrainiens ont fait au long des générations. Et nous sommes en train de regarder toutes les différentes euh, façons euh, de le faire et on va choisir la meilleure façon de le faire pour aider le plus de gens le plus rapidement possible. Mais sur ça, je suis très content de passer la parole euh, au ministre Fraser qui en, a pu en dire plus longuement. Et merci pour la question. Uh, nous travaillons avec le uh, uh, Congrès uh, ukrainien et uh, canadien de développer la, la meilleure façon d'avancer l'habilité pour les Ukrainiens uh, arriver au Canada. Uh, J'espère que vous êtes d'accord si je, je pose uh, la, la réponse uh, en, en anglais. Um, I've been working on my French. I hope, uh, hope that's okay. Um, we've, been, uh, we've been looking at all of the different options. Uh, our goal is to identify the best path forward to allow more Ukrainians to come to Canada uh, easily and safely. Uh, we're working with the Ukrainian Canadian Congress to develop the best path forward and working with uh, uh, different provincial counterparts as well to understand the opportunities to do this the right way and the most effective way. Um, I hope that answered your question. I was trying carefully to, uh, to follow. Pas exactement, mais, mais c'est pas grave. Euh, sur une autre note, bon, ch chaque jour, euh, votre, votre gouvernement annonce des, des sanctions. Maintenant, une aide militaire plus soutenue là, avec l'envoi d'armes. Est-ce qu'il y a lieu de s'inquiéter de représailles de la Russie? À quel point on devrait prendre ça au sérieux quand on est face à un président russe qui laisse envisager le spectre de l'arme nucléaire? C'est une très bonne question, Jasmine. Et on, a, euh, on en a discuté d'ailleurs ce matin euh, les leaders du G7 et le président Biden euh, sur cette question-là. Je peux vous dire que euh, les partenaires à travers le monde euh, et nous sommes résolus et déterminés euh, de voir euh, une fin à ce conflit, mais nous sommes aussi présents euh, pour démontrer qu'on ne peut pas rompre cette paix, cette stabilité qui a existé depuis 75 ans en Europe et par la suite profiter des avantages économiques que cette paix, cette stabilité a donné. Donc, nous savons que la seule façon de passer à travers, c'est de rester ferme et uni et de démontrer à Vladimir Poutine qui a fait une erreur 
horrible euh, qu'il a fait un mauvais calcul et qu'il va devoir reculer devant euh, l'unité et la fermeté euh, des pays dans le monde. Next question. Abigail Beeman, Global News. Uh, in English, on the nuclear threat, what is your analysis of uh, President Putin's decision this weekend? We had uh, a direct discussion about this uh, amongst allies this morning, President Biden and G7 leaders and others. Uh, as we talked about this, uh, obvious, this concern, but we agreed that we stand resolute and determined to demonstrate that you cannot violate 75 years of peace and stability in Europe and then turn around and expect to be able to benefit from, profit from, and enjoy the fruits of that stability and the growth that that stability brought us all. We are firm and determined to continue to stand strong together in defense of democracies. We will not look to provoke We will not look to escalate, but we will stand in defense of the values and the freedoms that Canadians and Americans and Europeans and people around the world have fought for and fought to preserve over the many decades past. Does raising the alert level of Russia's nuclear forces change anything about the posture of the Canadian armed forces? We continue to hope for and look for de-escalation. We continue to hope that uh, Russia will see that this was a terrible mistake and withdraw its forces from Ukraine, because we will not be backing down on the economic measures and sanctions that we have put forward to demonstrate to Putin and his cronies that they cannot violate the police, the peace and stability that we've seen in this world and expect to benefit from it personally and in their families. But on the military, I'm happy to turn to Minister Anand. Uh, so Putin's use and language relating to nuclear capabilities high, highly irresponsible and bellicose, and I condemn it in the strongest terms. In terms of the Canadian arms force, armed forces themselves, of course, we are participating in NATO reinforcement activities as part of Operation Reassurance in NATO's eastern flank. We announced last week that we are bolstering our 500-plus presence there with an additional capacity of up to 460 soldiers operating on air, land and sea. We are also, of course, standing by temporarily in Poland, where we hope to begin Operation Unifier once again in the future. But I want to be clear, Canadian Armed Forces members are assisting with the deterrence and defensive principles on which NATO is based. We also stand ready, of course, with our NATO allies if there were to be a breach and an occasion to invoke Article 5 of the Washington Treaty, which states essentially that an attack on one is an attack on all. We, as a country, are deeply committed to deterrence and defense, and we will work with our NATO allies to protect the international rules-based order and the sovereignty and stability of Ukraine. Thank you. We'll take one last question in the room before going to the phone. Ashley Brooks, CBC News. Minister Onan, actually. Um, where are you getting this lethal aid from? Is it being taken from the CAF inventory? Is it leftover stock purchase for the Kurds? Or is this something you're buying specifically for Ukraine? This is from Canadian Armed Forces inventory. The 125 launchers, 
Those are the Carl Gustav anti-tank weapon systems, uh, the 2,000 rockets, ammunition essentially, uh, that our allies are using and in fact our ammunition has been upgraded here. Ukraine is asking for this in addition to the lethal aid that we've already provided. And so, yes, the answer to your question, it's from CAF inventory. Thank you. And Prime Minister, when do you expect Ukraine to receive the latest shipment of this lethal aid? And do you have any concerns that Canada, publicly speaking, about sending more lethal aid could further provoke uh, Russia's president? You'll note that I rarely provide details regarding the path that our deliveries of lethal aid takes. And the reason is underlying your, in your question, because we want to make sure that the aid arrives in good time and in good hands. So what I can say is that we are coordinating with our NATO allies to ensure the safe passage of this aid. And it would be imprudent for me to provide further details at this time for the safety and security of the Canadian Armed Forces and for the safe passage of the ammunition and the weapons themselves. Thank you. Merci. On va maintenant passer aux questions au téléphone. We'll now take questions on the phone. Operator, c'est à vous. Thank you. Merci. The first question is from Tanda McCharles from the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, I hope you can clarify something for me. Just on the RT that you're taking, and I'm going to take. Tonda, you're, you're cutting oh, in and out a little bit. Uh, can you maybe start yeah. over again? And can we uh, raise the volume a little bit in the room, please? Sorry, is this better? Yes. It sounds better, yeah. Um, can you clarify on RT, the CRTC has yet to take action on other state-owned media outlets from other countries, including two Chinese networks that have aired forced confessions. And so if you're calling for a review of Russian propaganda being shared in Canada, will you also be pushing for action on disinformation from networks in other countries? Uh, thank you for the question. I think it's, it's a good question and one we should absolutely and are indeed reflecting on. Uh, right now, uh, because of the conflict in Ukraine, because of the importance of ensuring that people around the world are getting accurate information as to uh, Russia's choice to invade Ukraine, Russia's choice to kill Ukrainian civilians, Russia's choice to violate the territorial integrity of Ukraine and indeed the principles of peace and security that have held sway for so long and led to so much prosperity around the world. Um, it is important that Canadians and people around the world be faced with accurate information. That is why we have asked the CRTC to begin the process of uh, removing RT from its airwaves, but from Canada's airwaves. But we recognize the CRTC is an independent body. And this process is important because the independence of journalists, of media in this country is something that we have to take great care in. But even as this process is, is to be launched through the CRTC, I was very pleased to see a number of major carriers of news and information and networks uh, across this country uh, making the choice to ban Russia today uh, because of the nature of propaganda. And uh, certainly there can be uh, reflections of other countries that engage in misinformation. But right now, with the Ukraine crisis, our uh, focus is on there. Following up? Yes, thanks. Um, I would like some clarity. Yesterday, Minister Anand said a combat mission is not on the table at this time for Canadian troops. And you have all spoken about being ready to defend NATO. But I want to understand what you mean by a combat mission in Ukraine is not on the table at this time. What would be a, what is your trigger or threshold that would put Canadian troops into a combat mission in Ukraine? Is it the deployment of nuclear weapons? 
That decision, Tonda, is one to be made by our allies together. Uh, NATO is a defensive alliance that has agreed uh, to work together and has worked extraordinarily well together for many decades now in uh, keeping peace uh, in uh, Europe and indeed elsewhere around the world. Any decision to uh, shift NATO's posture needs to be taken by NATO leadership itself. Uh, indeed, the, the countries collected in NATO on, Thursday, on Friday morning, uh, we had a NATO leaders summit uh, where we discussed our vision for the future, the way we were going to be working together. Uh, and it is clear uh, that uh, we are not going to be sending uh, troops into Ukraine. Opérateur, on va prendre une dernière question au téléphone. La prochaine question de Émilie Bergeron, la presse canadienne. La parole est à vous. Oui, bonjour, M. Trudeau. Euh, il y a... Craignez-vous que les ressortissants canadiens en Russie euh, puissent devenir des personnes non grata? Et si c'est le cas, qu'est-ce que le Canada euh, recommande à ces personnes-là qui se trouvent en Russie présentement? On sait que la situation est très difficile pour bien des gens en Russie qui sont en désaccord avec la décision de Vladimir Poutine et du Kremlin d'envahir l'Ukraine. On a vu des manifestations par des milliers dans des villes, des communautés à travers la Russie, et on sait que ça va continuer. Euh, pour euh, les voyageurs canadiens qui se retrouvent actuellement en Russie, on va effectivement essayer de les aider à, à quitter la Russie. On va essayer de les aider euh, tant, tant qu'on puisse. Euh, mais on reconnaît que c'est une situation extrêmement difficile. C'est pour ça que euh, ça fait des semaines euh, qu'on encourage les gens de faire attention quand ils voyagent, que ce soit en Ukraine euh, ou en Russie comme tel. En suivi. Il y a des, il y a des compagnies aériennes là, qui... Euh... Ce n'est pas possible, là, finalement, de, de partir de la Russie. Donc, qu'est-ce que le Canada est prêt à faire pour, euh, si nécessaire, rapatrier ces ressources canadiens pris en Russie? Le Canada a pris la détermination, euh, cette fin de semaine, euh, qu'on allait fermer euh, notre espace aérien à, à tout appareil russe. Euh, C'est une décision importante qui démontre à quel point euh, les, euh, la, la compagnie aérienne russe et d'autres euh, jets privés russes ne vont pas pouvoir euh, traverser euh, le territoire euh, énorme canadien euh, pour essayer d'aller en vacances ou aller en voyage d'affaires. Euh, ça fait partie des mesures qu'on met en place parce que euh, la, le gouvernement russe est complice euh, de euh, ces actes euh, barbares qui se passe en Ukraine maintenant avec euh, l'invasion d'un pays souverain indépendant. Euh, nous allons continuer d'essayer d'offrir de l'aide euh, à tout Canadien en difficulté partout dans le monde, mais on reconnaît que c'est une situation extrêmement difficile maintenant. Merci. C'est ce qui m'a fait la conférence de presse aujourd'hui. This is what ends today's press conference. Thanks all.